You are here because the outside world rejects you. Let's do it. All right, so I have been asked this question a fair amount of times and it just recently came up again. So I thought, you know what? What a perfect time to answer this question because while I can answer it in the comments, um, I can give a better explanation, maybe uh, if I verbalize it to the camera and share it as a video. Plus, I just need some more content. I'm getting bored and I don't have stuff because I got a pack. But anyways, uh, the question is, it is your first time getting a snake. So what should you get? Um, so just to uh, get this out of the way, some disclaimers and some qualifiers right off the top. So if you don't know who I am, you're just first time stumbling across one of my videos. First of all, thank you. Uh, subscribe if you'd like. Uh, we kind of do this kind of stuff regularly-ish. Eh, um, but anyways, uh, disclaimer, when I speak about snakes, uh, I'm speaking very generalized. Uh, certainly individual snakes are going to act uh, a certain way. Not all of them are going to fit with inside the mold of which I am going to be describing them. There are always exceptions. The other, the other thing, the qualifier if you will, is I've been keeping reptiles for uh, 20 something years, 20, 22 years, something like that. Um, and I've kept a fair bit of animals, not everything, thankfully. Uh, there's always fun new stuff to discover. Um, so I'm going to base this, this whole video is based on my opinion from my experience. Others will have other opinions and other experiences and that's great. Let's collectively then pool that information together. But uh, for the sake of this video, it's all about uh, what I have encountered and what I feel is uh, a reasonable answer to the question. So also a little disclaimer, I am going to own it up front. I am extremely biased toward keeping corn snakes. They are the first snake for, for me, they're the snake that got me into it. But with that said, I'm going to try to set my bias aside and give a fair evaluation of a few other possibles. I guess it really comes down to in the industry and in the, in the community, the hobby, there's really only two, two that gets repeated as one is, one is better than the other. And depends on who you talk to, this, this is a ball that gets passed back and forth. So I'm going to, again, set aside my uh, biased belief and uh, try to give an honest, fair uh, evaluation of the two. And if you don't know the two, it is going to be corn snake and ball python. Um, both have their pros and cons. Uh, let's go with ball pythons. Ball pythons are relatively available come in a range of color morphs and uh, the gamut of price you know you can get them on the cheap or you can buy into the investment morphs that are way more expensive but you're a new person so you're going to go down and get the single morph stuff that's been out there for a while nothing wrong with that um, so readily available babies are, are about the perfect size for somebody who's new because they're not they're not that thin little uh little noodle like corn snakes are um you know they're they're hardy to them they, they've got some mass to them and still being babies so they're not intimidating uh to somebody who's new but for me uh the reason um i don't believe uh ball pythons are the number one best and that's simply because of the feeding. Um, I have kept several, uh, several dozen probably, ball pythons over the years. And the one thing that I can say for certain, 
and watching the forums and the Facebook groups is feeding is always an issue. Now, even with my experience, I still have problems with those little boogers feeding. Um, uh, case in point, I had a, I purchased a, a male ball python. Uh, and again, this is well into my experience of keeping many of things and purchased this animal sold to me as eating frozen thawed rat pups. Uh, come from a, a reputable breeder, no reason to question it. And in, um, in fact, I'm going to say that it, you know, that that was a fair representation of the animal. Um, if I remember correctly, it's going back a couple few years. Uh, the animal may have taken its first and second meal as a frozen thawed rat pup, but then for whatever reason, uh, unknown to me, the animal, the snake, started to only want live or fresh killed mice. So that's what I had to feed him. That's the only thing he would eat. If it was frozen thawed, wouldn't eat it. If it was a rat, would not eat it. Had to been a either live or fresh killed mouse, which neither of those options I liked too off, you know, like to do those off as an option. Uh, so I, I did all the tricks that I had learned to get this guy to f cross over. Um, now I've hatched babies. I understand sometimes they can be finical when it comes to eating. Um, but this one was already established. Uh, so long story short, that animal was probably two and a half, maybe three years old. And uh, nothing, nothing changed. He lived in that rack, not that, not that rack, the, that, that snake rack, that, not the cage, that snake rack. He lived in that. Um, one day I happened to be feeding the corn snakes that were in the rack as well, uh, and the other snakes. And, uh, and I, if I can pull up the footage, uh, I'll show it. I certainly should have it on the channel in one of the feeding videos, but uh, I opened up that tub to feed him. And uh, now, mind you, up until this time, every time I'd feed him, you open up the tub, he retracts back, coils up into a ball. You would have to leave the fresh kill in the cage, close it, and leave him alone. Don't come back to it. Well, this day, I expecting the same thing, open it up, have the, the rodent ready to throw in there, and he is just coming, he's coming out. He, he's never showed that behavior before. Nothing changed. Um, nothing that I can say that was environmental. Um, something in his mind changed. And from that day forward, he would eat frozen thawed rats right off the tongs and he was one of the most aggressive feeders. Why? I, I have no I, I have no explanation why all of a sudden he triggered and started doing that. My mind maybe uh, maybe it was breeding. Maybe he finally like kind of flipped into that mature uh, mindset where you know like he gave a damn about you know maybe there was a I don't remember the time of year so I can't say it was a breeding. Like I had a, a receptive female, um, usually that makes them stop eating, but maybe he experienced a cycle, uh, there was no longer a receptive female within uh, smell, if you will, and so that took him out of breeding, but then it was like supercharged his brain to suddenly now he needs to be the big guy, you know, bulk up and, and to impress the ladies for the next go around. Uh, I'm not for sure. I have, to this day, I have no explanation. And why do I say this? Well, because if you are new to snake keeping and you buy this ball python from the most reputable breeder out there and they sell it to you eating frozen thawed, again, you're new to this, so you buy the animal, you buy the fruit frozen thawed rodents and maybe the first time you get snake to eat. Maybe you get it to eat the second time. But then suddenly, like in my experience, um, the animal switched off. 
and does no longer want to eat maybe it only you know maybe you don't have the resources to like that i had where you can just quickly try a different prey item i have a bunch of snakes often so i have a variety of things i keep in the deep freezer um, so i can try different things i don't have live mice in the deep freezer so uh but anyways as a as a new person you know that could be off-putting to because th odds are what you're going to think as a new person is what am i doing wrong what am i not doing right or have done to this animal that suddenly it doesn't want to eat no more it's it's problematic it's tr it's a troublesome feeder and it probably is nothing sometimes ball pythons are just that way they just I often say they're similar to cats. They just do things on their own. You know, they don't care about anything but uh, doing things as they wish. Um, and that's just the way they are. I've had animals where for no reason that I could contribute to anything in human logic, why the animal acted the way it did. Why it suddenly changed prey items or why did it suddenly stop eating or why is it now aggressively eating? Like. You know, those sort of things are, as a new person, uh, might keep you up at night. If you're a good person, it would, you know, bother you enough to want to know. Now, corn snakes. I have bred corn snakes. I have hatched hundreds of babies. Uh, and, and all the hundreds of babies, I've had very few that will be problematic feeders. Um, Usually, once you get them eating on frozen thawed, they are good to go. They, they're good to go and they just go for it. I, I personally never had an experience where I had a corn snake that was eating frozen thawed who would refuse to eat except something live or freshly killed. I've never had that experience. And I'm telling you, I've hatched hundreds of, hundreds of baby corn snakes. I've kept, purchased from other people many dozens of corn snakes i have a lot of corn snake experience and they just don't disappoint when it comes to feeding once you get those guys going you're good to go if they do happen to uh be discouraged at food time it's usually because they're new to the environment or, you know it's just a fresh purchase but and i do not i do not endorse this but there have been times I have purchased a baby, a that year's baby corn snake from a reptile expo and usually I have to drive two or three hours away. Uh, while I'm at the show, I buy uh, a feeder mouse. Usually they are alive because it's just, I can't thaw it up and throw it in there. Um, but I will buy a rodent before I leave, throw it in the deli cup with my snake, put it in the back uh you know keep it out of sun well, you should keep it out of sunlight anyways but it's in somewhere dark cozy and climate controlled and then by the time i get home boom the the prey item is gone the snake has eaten it and and this is very again you, you really shouldn't do it but it can be done i'm only illustrating how well these guys will eat but they won't even regurge they will keep it down and you know it's it's there, you know, comes out the other end next week, you know, after it's fully digested. Uh, that's been my experience with corn snakes. Now, as a new person, what I would suggest is buying a corn snake that it's at least a year old. Okay, so buy a corn snake that is something around this size. Because um, this in my opinion let's get it to focus will you focus let me step off in my opinion an animal this size has is enough is big enough that you should be able to feel relatively confident in holding it without it being too small that you could potentially hurt it um, to get to this size come on focus camera to get the animal to this size obviously it is eating great um, it is well established and and it's feeding behavior um, it knows it recognizes and knows what its food is um, so 
this is about the size you could go smaller this is you know this is about the size um, it will be a little bit more tricky to find them at this age for sale uh, a lot of times you're gonna find them smaller but you know if you can go with this size this would be perfect um, if you go for a little bit smaller just the real the real downfall to small baby corn snakes is often they are easily uh, able to escape their enclosure. So where ball pythons, because they're, they're a fat, chunkier snake, um, they're not as easy to find the escape. Or it should be a little more blatantly obvious that they can escape from your enclosure for them to get through something. Uh, but these guys are a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, so um, they could probably, no, they will get through smaller holes than what that ball python will. So really, in my opinion, the only downside is as smaller as just um, being able to keep them in their environment, their their setup, uh, without the risk of them escaping. Okay, so as I'm editing this, uh, I want to just cut in here a minute. If you're gonna keep baby corn snakes, I like these type of containers. One, they have this locking lid that locks in there pretty good. Also, this is locking in. This is often what I use uh for my baby baby snakes uh whatever it is even baby lizards i put in in these containers um but yeah this is what i would suggest for baby corn snakes you can do a baby ball in here but uh it won't last as long a uh, baby corn will probably be in here for at least a year uh again depending on the size of the animal but if it is a youngster a fresh hatchling of that season uh, you'll be able to keep it in this for a year. You can get these smaller, you can get these bigger. Just check your local pet store and reptile show and see what's available to you in your area. So um, that is the two, two top animals, two top snakes. Now, of course, there are some other things. Um, I, I, th I believe, uh, and this is just from reading because I've never kept them, but I think like children's pythons, uh, they're a little bit of a small snake, and if you've got to have the python in there just so it sounds a little more badass, then that would be an alternative to like your ball python. Um, but one snake that I think is uh, should definitely be up there as a top contender, and I don't think uh, they don't get the credit that they deserve, and that's garter snakes. Um, I think because pretty much everybody in the States lives somewhere that has garter snakes. Garter snakes are all over this country. Um, so I think they're, because they're they're common, we see them or potentially uh, right outside our door. Um, you know, we overlook them, but check your local, your state laws and stuff to see. But even if you can't keep the natives that are in your area, there's plenty of other options that are non-native that you would be able to keep. Um, and one thing, the reason I like garter snakes, um, and I don't have any, uh, I've, it's been a while and I used to keep checkers. Um, the perk for those is if you are a person who does not like to feed rodents, cause that's another thing. Oh, I can't feed rodents. That's why I don't have snakes. Garter snakes will eat all kinds of things. They'll eat worms. Um, they will eat minnows. So you could feed them that. Uh, they will feed on rodents. Um, they do have a higher metabolism, so you probably have to feed them a little bit more regularly than you will, say, a corn snake or even a ball python. Um, their size, I, th I think, is a perfect size, um, depending on which kind you get. But you know, I think most will somewhere be in the range of 18 to like 24 inches. Um, give or take, uh, just, just off the top of my head. I did not research this, uh, but you know, that size is, is pretty manageable. Um, you could probably get away with an 18 or a 20 long. Um, of course, you know, the, uh, the 40 gallon breeder would always be best. Um, and it, here's another one. It's, I'm just going to throw it out there, but they can, are, are able to cohab um the other two you really you shouldn't if you don't have to um if you're just being cheap and uh don't want to put the money into buying another setup then you're already starting off on the wrong foot um but yeah so i think garter snakes deserve to be up there at least as a as a 
top three contender. Um, but yeah, so that is, that's my thoughts. That's my experience. Um, I, I don't know if I've missed anything. Uh, if, if you've watched this video and you still have questions, leave your questions in the comments below and I will answer them. And if the question um, needs a video explanation, I most certainly will do that. If, uh, you know, if it gives me the ability to, to just sit here and talk into the camera for 15, 20 minutes, um, I definitely will, uh, will be glad to uh, do that for, for you guys. But um, so if you, if you haven't figured it out, my number one is the corn snake over ball pythons. That's all I've got. So until next time, later. Shut up and sit down.